Hi everybody, my name is Marin, and today I have for you yoga poses for depression. So we're doing five yoga poses today. We're gonna to be doing the bridge, wide-legged forward bend, upward dog, head to knee, and savasana. Let's go ahead and get started. For the bridge, you wanna find a nice comfortable place to lay down on the ground. I got my yoga mat laid out. You don't have to have a yoga mat, but it's always very helpful and comforting to the practice. From here, we're gonna keep our knees bent and our feet flat on the floor. Keep both toes pointed out in the same direction, just straight out, and your ankles are gonna be about shoulder width apart. We're bringing both of our hands to either side of our hips, palms facing down, and go ahead and walk your heels back a little further than you would expect. From here, we're gonna take a big inhale, and as we exhale, you're pushing your hips up, squeezing those glutes. Go ahead and adjust your feet if you feel like it. Make sure they're nice and flat. Knees are together so they're not opening. Keep them nice and tight. Continue to squeeze those glutes and push your hips up towards the sky, pressing the palms into the ground. Now, if you're feeling savvy and want to in include your shoulders and have a full body stretch here, go ahead and clasp your hands behind you and extend them out, pressing your fingertips or your pinky knuckles into the ground as you continue to squeeze your glutes and press those hips up. Relax as you come down. How good does that feel? And then we're gonna go right into the second pose, which is a wide-legged forward bend. So we're going to extend our legs out slightly wider than shoulder width apart, and you're more than welcome to have your toes slightly at the corners. They don't have to be completely straight. So play with it, and either way, you're going to get a great stretch. It is gonna change the dynamic of the stretch slightly, whether it's in your inner thighs or really back at the hamstrings. So pointing the toes forward, you're really aiming for more of the hamstrings. You're going to press your hips back as you bend at the waist, keeping that back nice and straight. Place your hands at the upper thighs to start, and as you come all the way down, you can feel free to walk into this, rocking side to side. Make this as dynamic as you want. You can breathe in with the inhale, exhale as you come down and flow into that. Be welcome to place your hands on the ground. Let's bend the knees slightly, keeping the back nice and straight. And then exhale, extending up. Try to relax your neck and shoulders, extending all the way up. And once you feel comfortable, you can grab your ankles or your shins and deepen yourself into the pose with an exhale. In this position, you can also incorporate the clasped hands behind the back, giving your shoulders a nice stretch, making this a full body stretch as well. Exhale as you come back up, and feel free to repeat. The next motion we have is upward dog. This is one of my favorite poses for stress relief because it really opens up the shoulders and it releases the core and gives our back a nice compression, which is completely opposite of how we move and sit on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're gonna get started by getting in a plank position. I like to say keep your wrist right beneath your shoulders and your plank nice and flat. So make sure your hips are neither up or down, nice and flat. From here, you're gonna gently sink your hips down towards the ground. We're gonna turn up our feet to the top of the mat, pressing our big toes into the ground. Now roll those shoulders back and down and extend those arms up. This is the upward dog. You're gonna maintain a straight gaze right in front of you. And if the upward dog is too much or something difficult for you to get into, feel free to relax all the way down, bringing your shoulders up at shoulder height and pressing your palms into extension. And this is now the Cobra Pose. So play around with a variety. If Cobra is still too much, you can come down into the Sphinx, just playing, placing your forearms on the ground. Just whatever you do, get that nice compression in the back. It should be with ease. And breathe deeply into it. Come back down to relaxation on the mat before getting up. And then we can go ahead and flip over onto our glutes to demonstrate the head to knee pose. For head to knee, you're just gonna extend one leg out, bending one knee up. Sometimes this is enough of a position to get into to really feel the tension in the back of the glutes and thighs. That's completely fine because typically when it comes to our hamstrings and our glutes, it takes a little while to sit into the actual pose and let those muscles release. So if this is where you're at, you can start by extending your legs, placing your hands 
right next to your hips, pressing them into the floor to get yourself nice and upright, lift the butt kind of, and get your shoulders really right over those hips. If that's all you're at, you can press right into the ground into a nice upright position and you can hold this pose right here. But if you wanna deepen the pose and isolate it on one leg, we're gonna go into head to knee by bending one foot up. From here, sit up nice and tall, breathe in deep. You can even raise your hands and as you exhale, bend at the waist, keeping your shoulders nice and upright. When you get as far as you can, like I'm right here, you can even have a little bend in the knee if you want. Just keep that back nice and straight. But as you get to as far as you can, go ahead and gently lower your forehead to the knee. Again, this is not about flexibility. This is about doing the pose so that it helps increase your relaxation, reducing stress, and helping to relieve depression. So again, sit in this pose for as long as you can. If you sit in this pose longer, you'll notice that you'll be able to sit deeper into it. So we're, I'm gonna stretch up again, this time keeping my legs straight. And as you can see, deeper into that pose. Try not to arch the back, keeping the back nice and flat, and then bringing the forehead down to the knee. You also wanna make sure that you switch legs with this pose. Again, sit into it patiently, take your time with this pose, feel free to repeat, and alternate legs if you like. For the last pose we're doing, Savasana, this is something that you should end your routine with every single time or some sort of seated meditative pose. With Savasana, you really wanna make sure that you are in a comfortable and anatomical position. So this is a complete relaxation pose. So we're just letting our legs open about shoulder width apart, lay back down on the ground. From here, I like to lift my shoulders up, roll them back and down so that the shoulder blades are flat on the ground, palms facing up. So you're gonna notice that your hands and feet splay away from the center. That's completely normal, that's what we wanna see. And you can also tuck your hips slightly so that you're a little more flatter in the back. Close your eyes here and focus on breathing in through your nose, raising the belly, filling it with air. And then exhale deeply and slowly through the mouth. Here in Savasana, you wanna stay for about three to five minutes. You can do this with or without a yoga routine. Uh, we put it last here because it is something that is nice to do and focus on after you've done a little more intensive stretching. But for now, that is the five yoga poses I have to share with you to help relieve depression. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to put them together, repeat them as you like, and create a yoga routine or a stretch routine on a daily basis for it. Thank you so much for joining me here, and I hope you appreciated this video. I'll see you next time.